Welcome to the God's Peculiar People podcast, where we learn about the lives and characteristics of God's people. Today on the podcast, I just wanted to spend a few minutes reading some quotes from a few of the famous missionaries. This might become a regular series where we just read some different quotes by missionaries, by preachers, by hymn writers. We could just read some hymns. Um, but there's just so many good quotes out there, and sometimes hearing them makes a different impact on us than just reading them. So I thought I would read them. Today's quotes are going to be from David Livingston, Hudson Taylor, Mary Slessor, Isabel Kuhn, William Carey, and Adoniram Judson and Amy Carmichael. So let's start with some quotes by David Livingston. God, send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me. Only sustain me. And sever any tie in my heart except the tie that binds my heart to yours. If you have men who will only come if they know there's a good road, I don't want them. I want men who will come if there's no road at all. I will go anywhere, provided it be forward. All that I am I owe to Jesus Christ, revealed to me in his divine book. There is one safe and happy place, and that is in the will of God. If a commission by an earthly king is considered an honor, how can a commission by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? I will place no value on anything I have or may possess, except in relation to the kingdom of Christ. The best remedy for a sick church is to be put on a missionary diet. For my own part, I have never ceased to rejoice that God has appointed me to such an office. People talk of the sacrifice I have made in spending so much of my life in Africa. Is that a sacrifice which brings its own blessed reward and healthy activity? The conscience of doing good, peace of mind, and a bright hope of a glorious destiny hereafter? Away with the word sacrifice. Say rather, it is a privilege. Anxiety, sickness, suffering, or danger, now and then, with the foregoing of the common conveniences and charities of this life, may make us pause, and cause the spirit to waver, and the soul to sink. But let this only be for a moment. All these things are nothing, when compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us and for us. I never made a sacrifice. This generation can only reach this generation. God had an only son, and he made him a missionary. Next, some quotes from Hudson Taylor, and you remember he's a missionary to China, founder of the China Inland Mission. When I cannot read, when I cannot think, when I cannot even pray, I can trust. You do not have your concert first, and then tune your instrument afterwards. Begin the day with the word of God in prayer, and get first of all into harmony with him. All God's giants have been weak men who did great things for God, because they reckon on God being with them. God's work, done as God's way, will never lack God's supply. There are three stages to every great work of God. First, it is impossible. Then, it is difficult. Then, it is done. I am no longer anxious about anything, as I realize that he is able to carry out his will for me. It does not matter where he places me or how, that is for him to consider, not me. For in the easiest positions he will give me grace, and in the most difficult ones his grace is sufficient. Depend on it. God's work, done God's way, will never lack God's supply. He is too wise a God to frustrate his purpose for lack of funds, and he can just as easily supply them ahead of time as afterwards, and he much prefers doing so. God isn't looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. The Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. It does not matter how great the pressure is. What really matters is where the pressure lies, whether it comes between you and God, or whether it presses you nearer his heart. If I had a thousand pounds, China should have it. If I had a thousand lives, China should have them. No, not China, but Christ. Can we do too much for him? Can we do enough for such a precious Savior? Not by discussions, nor by argument, but by lifting up Christ shall we draw men unto him. The real secret of an unsatisfied life lies too often in an unsurrendered will. Let us give up our work, our thoughts, our plans, ourselves, 
our lives, our loved ones, our influence, our all, right into his hand. And then, when we have given all over to him, there is nothing left for us to be troubled about, or to make trouble about. Following are quotes from Mary Slusser, missionary to West Africa. Lord, the task is impossible for me, but not for thee. Lead the way, and I will follow. Christ never was in a hurry. There was no rushing forward, no anticipating, no fretting over what might be. Each day its duties were done as each day brought them, and the rest was left with God. My life is one long daily, hourly record of answered prayer, for physical health, for mental overstrain, for guidance given marvelously, for errors and dangers averted, for enmity to the gospel subdued, for food provided at the exact hour needed, for everything that goes to make up life in my poor service. I can testify, with a full and often wonder-stricken awe, that I believe God answers prayer. If you are ever inclined to pray for a missionary, do it at once, wherever you are. What would I do with starred crowns, except to cast them at his feet? Quotes from Isabel Kuhn I believe that in every generation, God has called enough men and women to evangelize all the yet unreached tribes of the earth. It is not God who does not call. It is man who will not respond. Hudson Taylor is right in his discovery. Learn to move men through God by prayer alone. We need to look resolutely away from the impossibilities and to the Lord. His help will come. Did you think that the missionary path was all glory? Then you have not read of God's greatest messenger on earth, who sat and wept over Jerusalem, crying out, I would, but ye would not. Part of the heartache of all missionary work is the bright, promising convert who turns out to be a mere puffball, crumbling like a macaroon under the least pressure. Quotes from William Carey, the father of modern missions. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. To know the will of God, we need an open Bible and an open map. You have been speaking about William Carey. When I am gone, say nothing about William Carey. Speak only about William Carey's Savior. If he gives me credit for being a plotter, he will describe me justly. Anything beyond that will be too much. I can plot. I can persevere in any definite purpose. To this I owe everything. Without justification, salvation is not of grace, but of works. I am not afraid of failure. I am afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. When I left England, my hope of India's conversion was very strong, but among so many obstacles, it would die, unless upheld by God. Well, I have God, and His word is true. Though the superstitions of the heathen were a thousand times stronger than they are, and the example of the Europeans a thousand times worse, though I were deserted by all and persecuted by all, yet my faith, fixed on the sure word, would rise above all obstructions and overcome every trial. God's cause will triumph. I feel that it is good to commit my soul, my body, and my all into the hands of God. Then the world appears little, the promise is great, and God an all-sufficient portion. Adoniram Judson It is possible that my life may be spared. If so, with what ardor and gratitude shall I pursue my work, and if not, his will be done. The door will be open for others who will do the work better. There is no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it is because someone has suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, it is because someone will succeed after. I will not leave Burma until the cross is planted here forever. The motto for every missionary, whether preacher, printer, or schoolmaster, ought to be devoted for life. The future is as bright as the promises of God. It is true that we may desire much more, but let us use what we have, and God will give us more. I am not tired of my work, neither am I tired of the world, yet when Christ calls me home, I shall go with gladness. Let me beg you not to rest contented with the commonplace religion that is now so prevalent. Our prayers run along one road, and God's answers by another, and by and by they meet. Quotes by Amy Carmichael it is great to be faced with the impossible, for nothing is impossible if one is meant to do it. Wisdom will be given and strength. When the Lord leads, he always strengthens. Let us
must not be surprised when we have to face difficulties. When the wind blows hard on a tree, the roots stretch and grow the stronger. Let it be so with us. Let us not be weaklings, yielding to every wind that blows, but strong in spirit to resist. Let nothing be said about anyone unless it passes through the three sieves. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? We have all eternity to celebrate the victories, but only a few hours before the sunset to win them. Our loving Lord is not just present, but nearer than the thought can imagine, so near that a whisper can reach him. All along, let us remember we are not called to understand, but simply to obey. Thank God he doesn't measure out grace in teaspoons. There are so many good quotes that missionaries, preachers, hymn writers have come up with over the years that maybe they didn't expect so many people would or would read and see them later on in life. But they're very good. They're very interesting. They're very impactful. And just these little short snippets sometimes. Some are longer, but these little ones sometimes can make such an impact on us, can get our brain thinking. So I hope you listen to these and uh, consider missions. Consider the sacrifice. Is it truly a sacrifice? Or is it just another way of living more like Christ? Of giving up maybe what we think we want to serve God to share with others what he has done for us. So hopefully you found these interesting. Uh, let me know in the comments who your favorite person is to read quotes from. I know many people like Spurgeon. Um, Jim Elliot has a lot of really good quotes. Elizabeth Elliot has some good quotes. Um, so we'll, we'll do some more of these in the future. We might do a whole episode just specifically on one person in the future. Uh, but just thought this would be interesting to hear a few of these. I'll try to put, um, if I can, if there's enough space in the description, I'll try to put all these in there. If not, maybe I'll find a way to put them on a site somewhere so that you can go and uh, be able to see them and read them, listen to them. So that is it for today. Thank you guys for listening to the God's Peculiar People podcast. I will talk to you again next week.